Hi, I'm Old Nurse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. I teach at the University of Colorado Boulder, previously at UC Berkeley and UCLA. Who is Odin, the chief god of the Norse pantheon? Popular culture has a clear idea about who he is, and he's often presented as kind of a grandfatherly figure. But in fact, he's a very complicated and in many ways dangerous figure in the actual Old Norse sources, especially our principal sources for Norse mythology, the Poetic Edda, the Prose Edda, and the mythical sagas. Now, the Poetic Edda is a compilation of poems written down in Iceland in the 1200s, but based on an oral tradition that stretches back to the Viking Age, while the Prose Edda is the work of one author, Snorri Sturluson, writing in the 1220s in an effort to uh, remember all that he could of Norse mythology in order to explain traditional Norse poetry styles. And then we have some mythical heroic sagas, such as the saga of the Volsungs, or the saga of Hervor and Heiðrek, which present uh, myths in which Odin interacts with human heroes and reveals much of his own personality. Now, Odin's name may give us a, an initial peek into his character. Odr, an adjective in Old Norse, means mad and has the same ambiguity as English mad, meaning uh, either crazy or angry. So Odin is simply the mad one, whether crazy or angry. Either one fits him pretty well. Now, Odin is in a constant quest for wisdom and knowledge because he wants to learn something, anything, that might help him prevent or forestall his fate at Ragnarok. Ragnarok is the great battle between gods and giants in which all of the gods, including Odin, will be killed. Now, Odin knows, thanks to the prophecy in the poem Voluspol in the Poetic Edda, that the wolf Fenrir will kill him at Ragnarok. And so he travels around the world in disguise uh, of course, his disguise is basically himself. He is a, an old man, typically dressed in gray with a wide-brimmed hat and one eye, and he disguises himself as an old gray-haired man with one eye, often dressed in gray. And he'll give off his name as something like Bolverker, evildoer, or Horbarder, gray beard, something either suggestive of his personality or his appearance, and typically, in some way, get people killed. And what he's trying to do is harvest people uh, for his army in Valhall, his, his hall, which is the hall of those killed in battle. Val meaning men killed in battle and hall meaning hall. And uh, once a man has died in battle and gone to Valhall, he spends the rest of eternity till Ragnarok fighting every day with the other warriors in Valhall, being killed by them and killing them in turn, being resurrected in the evening for a great feast, and then going back to fight again the next day. And Odin's methods of harvesting these men are often very direct. For a period, he will often favor a particular warrior if he's getting a lot of people killed, because that's something Odin likes. He wants people getting killed in battle so they can go to Valhall, the only way for a dead man to go there. For instance, uh, it is said that the great uh, legendary Danish king Harald Wartooth had a pact with Odin in which uh, Odin had made him impervious to weapons of iron and steel. Feeling like he was essentially immortal, because, of course, that's what weapons are made of in the Viking Age. Uh, Harold Wartooth led a number of campaigns, conquered many rival kingdoms, and, of course, instigated the death of thousands of men in battle. But as he began to get older, Odin decided it was time to harvest him. And so uh, Harold Wartooth gets into his chariot and is about to ride off to battle when who should he see is his charioteer but a man that he's never seen before. An old man dressed in gray with a wide brimmed hat and one eye, presumably, turns around and beats him to death with a wooden staff. Or consider the hero Sigmundur from the saga of the Volsungs, blessed by Odin with a fantastic sword that was able to cut through rock. As Sigmundur too grew older, he found himself engaged in battle against an enemy, and as he rode into the front ranks of the enemy, he saw coming at him an old man dressed in gray with a wide brimmed hat and one eye. And this man brought his spear, Odin's traditional weapon, to the fore, and Sigmundr swung his sword, a gift from Odin itself, of course, shattered it on the spear, and of course was killed in the ensuing battle. Now, Odin's spear is called Gungnir. It was made by dwarves and uh, is said to never miss a target that it is aimed at. His horse, Sleipnir, has eight legs and is said to be faster than any other horse. Meanwhile, he has two wolves, Geri and Freki, roughly hungry and greedy, uh, who eat all of the food that Odin has served. He lives on wine alone, according to the poem Grimnismal and the Poetic Edda. 
and then his two ravens, Hugen and Munin, thought and memory, fly around the world and bring Odin back the news in the evening. They are often also uh, seen as representatives of Odin himself, appearing, for instance, at the scenes of sacrifices made to Odin to symbolize Odin's acceptance of the sacrifice. Odin communicates directly with humankind in one uh, very memorable and uh, I think particularly important poem that survives from the oral tradition of the Viking Age, and that is Hovamol, the words of the High One, the High One of course being Odin. This poem contains not only a lot of practical advice from Odin, uh, which ranges from everything to the basics, don't tell more than one person your secret, to uh, get up early if you need to kill somebody, but also contains his mysteries, such as the mysterious passage about his sacrifice of himself to himself on the World Tree Yggdrasil in order to learn runes. For more about all these tales, I hope you'll check out my playlist on this channel, including Norse Myth Stories and Beliefs and Norse Myth The Gods, and of course, my translation of the Poetic Edda, which includes two translations of Halvamol, and my translation of the Saga of the Volsungs, my upcoming translations of the Saga of Herborn Haithric and the Prose Edda. My videos, made in beautiful places for free, are supported by Patreon donations, for which I am very thankful. For now, from beautiful Colorado, I'm wishing you all the best.